Sure, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody for being here tonight. Um, you know, we've gotten um, some concern from folks in this area around roadway safety. And so uh, my office pulled together this study. We want to have the experts really look at the data and see what's going on in and around this uh, Sandia High School area. So I'm just excited that you're all actively participating in this process. And I'm curious to see uh, what we will learn tonight. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Paul, do you want to do you want to get started? You bet. Uh, you're going to share the please share the next slide. It's happening. All right. Uh, so quick introductions. Thank you, Councilor Fablecorn. Um, the city of Albuquerque has asked uh, Lee Engineering to uh, complete a safety study uh, traffic calming analysis. Uh, so we've taken that on and we are in our first steps of that. I am Paul Baraclo with Lee Engineering. Uh, with me today, you've met the, the voice of uh, Stephen Montano, and uh, helping us out as well is uh, Michael Polycastro. So we'll just dive right in um, and get to the introductions. Um, so the, the purpose of today's meeting is to gather feedback. We are going to share some of our initial findings and with those, uh, we'll have some speed data, some traffic counts that we've collected. We've got a, a plethora of uh, crash data analysis to present and some additional observations that we've had for uh, during our field visit about uh, parking and other um, observations in the area. So those are the three things that we're gonna hit on from our side. What we are really looking to accomplish in this meeting is one, Let's make sure that we're capturing the right data, that these, the data that we are captured uh, is representative of what you see and live through uh, each and every day. And then also feedback on, hey, anything we missed? Hey, can you look at this area, that area? There's this going on. Um, those type of things is, is what we're looking for uh, on this meeting. So looking forward to the schedule. Uh, we've got, uh, data collection that we completed in March. Uh, that included a, an initial site visit, a walking workshop where we we uh, we walked along Delwood uh, as a group. Uh, several of us um, then drove around the area uh, and made additional observations at that time. Um, from that, we've pulled our traffic counters that were collected at the same time, and we've summarized uh, the traffic and safety data over the, the remaining two weeks to arrive here at uh, public meeting number one. Again, this is our initial findings and initial um, kind of hearing from the community uh, about the concerns. Um, following this meeting, we will go uh, back to the field and back to the data and look for those uh, safety mitigations, um, hearing the concerns and trying to put together a package of optional solutions that uh, can be presented back to the community uh, in public meeting number two. Uh, initially, that's scheduled uh, the week of May 22nd. It's not a hard date at this time, uh, but we look forward to getting that out to you as well. Um, kind of on that same note, uh, that if you've responded to Stephen with comments or you've signed up through uh, other means uh, through the counselor services, um, you'll be on that list if you need to uh, know somebody that needs to get on that list. The best way is to, to email Stephen or uh, the counselor and their representative. Um, so we'll make the announcement about that final report will be due in July. Um, so when as far as these, this study, uh, the greater uh, Sandia High School area is going to be bound by uh, several arterials. Uh, those arterials are not the focus of this study, but the uh, arterial Comanche on the north, um, a collector, if you will, in that case. Um, then we have Louisiana on the west, uh, Manal on the south, and Wyoming on the east. Um, this study is geared to be uh, focused on the collectors and the local streets in the area. Um, so we are, uh, for this purpose, really ignoring those major intersections with those major arterials. Um, 
a few highlighted areas uh, in the map. Uh, you'll notice that on the east side of the study area is uh, a little leg out there on Aztec. Uh, Aztec uh, not only provides some connectivity through the community, um, it also had a few um, vulnerable user crashes. Uh, and so we did want to pull that into the study area. Uh, additionally, another prominent road um, is, is Claremont there on the south. That will do that. Um, looking at a few things within the area, we do have a few bicycle facilities. Um, you know, Comanche being a, uh, a collector um, does have bicycle lanes on it. Pennsylvania does as well. Um, and then uh, Delwood, um, kind of the west uh, alignment near Delwood, uh, also has uh, a paved multi-use trail uh, that uh, aligns with the Arroyo in that area. Um, a few uh, crossings highlighted there, but um, additionally, um, Claremont is, or is that classic, um, there's a bike route on the, the south end. Yes, it is Claremont and uh, not uh, Phoenix. So um, that uh, is designated a bike route for connectivity um, through the area. Looking uh, a little bit deeper into the uh, land uses that are within the area, we've got uh, majority, 90% is residential. Uh, the next, uh, uh, most prominent is going to be the the high school, uh, Sandia High School, loaded uh, you know northeast central of the study area. There are a few other schools within the area, several community and church facilities, um, with most of any commercial being on the outskirts, uh, east and west sides. I'm gonna finish this one last slide on some of the existing conditions. Uh, but we did look at some of the, the state historic traffic counters, and those counters um, are located. We've got five of them here in the project area. Um, these are temporary counts that they do fairly often. And then with looking at the historical um, traffic volumes, we're able to establish a growth rate. This um, figure on the right identifies the average growth rate uh, within the study area um, and it highlights one of the uh, the locations there. Uh, but basically the, the negative 2.3% is the growth rate. This is um, slightly influenced by um, COVID and the pandemic there in 2020-2021. So I'm not so certain on the, the, the negative part of that growth rate, but the, the most important piece that uh, we take away from this is that as we see with the land development, most of this area is built out. Uh, it's not experiencing a whole lot of um, redevelopment and you know, major parcels being changed over to more dense development. Being that it's 90% residential, uh, we don't see that coming in the future either. Um, so from this, I would say that the growth in the study area, specifically when we narrow down to these collectors and local streets, is going to be um, pretty stable. Stephen, you want to continue with the data collection? Yep. Thanks, Paul, and uh, thank you, uh, uh, Councilor Fiebelkorn, and uh, thank you to our attendees as well for uh, for taking your time to be here today. Um, so, uh, you know, Paul, as Paul already said, we kind of introduced our study area. Um, uh, with that, though, we all, we wanted we, we with that study area, we kind of had our uh, uh, our work cut out for us to uh, to pick some data collection sites. Uh, because it's such a large study area, um, we, we we obviously weren't able to to count every every road in there. So we kind of looked for some some roads that had some unique characteristics. Um, typically, kind of you know more more of the the through streets, um, which might exhibit some some potential uh, for for cut through traffic. Uh, we looked at streets that kind of had a lot of connectivity. Um, we also looked at um, streets that might be re just just a, a representative of of a of a typical uh, local residential street. Uh, we also looked um, and kind of looked for locations to collect data where there were, um, uh, you know, high, high crash, high crash rates um, um, 
And so we wanted to, again, kind of try to get an idea of what was what was going on in those areas. And that's generally how we selected um, these these sites uh, for for collecting data. And and these data collection sites that we did choose, um, we put out pneumatic tube counters, which were able to uh, provide us with uh, vehicle volumes, um, vehicle classifications, uh, and 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 vehicle speeds um, at those locations. <clears throat> Um, for for this presentation, because of the 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 amount of of um, of sites that we collected data and the, and the amount of data that we have to share with that, uh, and not to um, take everyone's evening up and and kind of have a, a death by PowerPoint, we we selected a few um, sites to discuss, um, and they were kind of more representative of, of of again of the area. We have one um, at site two that is on Pennsylvania, the the collector uh, in the area. Which is going to, you know, we, we expect to see probably some some higher volumes, definitely. Um, but we also selected um, other the other sites, the other four sites that were kind of representative of each uh, kind of quadrant of our of our study area, uh, starting with um, Delwood in the uh, the northwest, um, and that's yeah, yeah Delwood in the northwest. We have um, a, one one on Claremont in the the southwest, uh, going over to the uh, the south southern southeast part of the quadrant. We have another another on. Uh, on Claremont, and then um, another uh, moving north to the northeast part of our our study area, we have one another one on Delwood. Um, and we, we again we kind of pick these sites for some again some of their unique more unique characteristics. Uh, site three and site ten or more um, kind of baseline local street uh, where, where we kind of move to the to the uh, eastern part of, the, of, our, of our study area, and site five has kind of some uh, some influence of the, the traffic influence by the school schedule. Um, and then also site 13, uh, we kind of looked at the area might be, um, there's some there's some other land uses down that way. And also uh, kind of looks like it may have some, um, exhibit some 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 tendency for some cut through traffic, which we will we'll talk about in a few slides. <clears throat> so before you get overwhelmed, let's take a moment. Um, what we're looking here um, is is so for each of our five um, selected sites, we kind of put this almost an, an info uh, packet together for each one and kind of packed a lot of it into a slide. But um, I'm going to take a moment and kind of show you what we're looking at and what we're going to how we're going to how we're going to approach this and uh, and then we'll get into it. So starting, um, you know, it's a little counterintuitive, but starting on your right hand side, um, we have an aerial of, of our study area with a, a small circular marker. It's highlighting the uh, the location we we're talking about. Um, there is a you can see a number of seven thousand one hundred and twenty four next to our first marker here. That number that number is the um, average daily traffic. At that location, which we collected from our data counts, um, what that average daily traffic is, is the um, the average the, the, the volume of vehicles traveling past that point in a over a 24 hour period. Um, and so, so we have uh, again. We have so we're starting here with this aerial. We have a uh, kind of a volume for the area. Um, on the on the further right, we have a the speed limit of 25 miles per hour. Which, before I go and repeat for every slide, the entire speed limit for all of our study streets in this in this study are is 25 miles per hour. <clears throat> so, looking at the chart on the top left, um, we are showing a bar chart where each bar is representing the volume, the traffic volume for each hour of the day. So we can kind of get a, a, a see a trend um, in the in the traffic throughout the day at that site. Um, looking at the bar at the the bar chart on the bottom of of the left side of the screen, um, that is showing a proportion. I uh, let me back up a second. Um, so the bars, like I said, are showing um, our volumes throughout the day, but they are filled with different colors, and each of those colors are representing the the speed compliance at that site. Um, we kind of use a typical traffic uh, color scheme where we're looking at green, uh, green meaning good, obviously, are vehicles that are traveling within, um, are, are at or below the speed limit. Um, we'll move up to the yellow, and this is representing uh, the, the vehicles that are traveling between one and seven miles per hour over the speed limit. And then uh, we colored all vehicles that were traveling over seven miles per hour, over seven seven miles per hour, seven miles per hour are, are higher above the speed limit we color that in red uh to kind of catch that attention and uh, and see that there may be something going on or or just 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 to see that there might be a problem and, and, and really highlight that issue there um so so 
with that kind of being said, we're going to start with the, with 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 the traffic volume here on Pennsylvania. As we as Paul mentioned, this is a a collector street. Um, it's the only um, non local or residential street in our study area. Um, and as we would expect, um, we have a volume of about 7000 vehicles per day, a little over 7000 at that location. And that's that's echoed again, kind of at the southern counter on uh, Pennsylvania of about 7500. So that's pretty consistent. But we have we have pretty high volumes. It's a collector. People are using not, not just people going going home or using the street or leaving home. A lot of people are moving through this area uh, on that on that road there. <clears throat> Those 7000 vehicles are broken up throughout the day. Um, typically, I mean, as we can see, that the majority of those vehicles are are traveling between seven and six p.m. Um, we have kind of some. Okay, we're, we're sorry, we're looking at the the top left um, chart now with the bar chart over here. Um, the that that is that early morning a.m. peak, probably driven by schools, driven by people going to work. Um, we see that kind of dip down, start rising again around the midday, kind of lunch lunch hour. Uh, ultimately peaking in the, at the end of the day during that uh, kind of post post school people coming home uh, between you know two and and five o'clock or so um, at at that location. Um, the one the one of the most I think kind of um, maybe jarring things we see about this is is the the large amount of red uh, indicating kind of higher speeds. Um, it's a fairly large roadway, fairly wide. Um, a lot of people are traveling through, um, but we're seeing kind of consistent. Consistent high speeds throughout the day, um, not really focused on a on a, on a time of day. Um, the only thing we see in the bottom proportional chart is sort of in those peak hours when there are a higher higher amount of vehicles on the road. Um, our proportion of, of of high end speeders is is much lower than throughout the rest of the day. Um, so that's again kind of a typical look a look at a typical uh, collector or the only collector in this study area. Next, we're going to move over to to Delwood um, in the northwest quadrant of our study area. Um, this is this is just uh, east of Picard Avenue, um, and and I think just from my blood pressure, I think not seeing all the red has kind of you know felt felt pretty good. Come down on the left side of the screen here, um, but again, starting with the the volumes and the location, you can see on the right we have that circle right over, like I said, on the northwest part of this, uh, much lower volumes. Uh, 234 cars in 24 hours, um, much, much lower volumes, obviously. Uh, you can see that by the the top left bar chart of the vehicles per hour. Um, a lot more green and a lot, lot less uh, traffic throughout the day. <clears throat> so and so moving down to our our proportional bar chart of show, kind of indicating um, the proportion of, of higher uh, speed vehicles, we can see some nothing gets out of that. Uh, plus, you know, seven over um, range, but we can see that the the people people in a hurry or people moving quickly are kind of focused around that morning, midday, and and evening peak hour. Uh, and now we're so we're moving south of this into the more so southwestern quadrant of our study area, uh, where we have a little bit more increased volume here. Um, and this is down on Claremont. Uh, just I want to say it was it uh, east of Espanola, uh, west of uh, no, yeah, east of Espanola. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, but we can see from the chart on the top left, we see a little bit more, a little bit more volumes, which goes along with the, the vo more volumes throughout the day. Uh, a little bit more uh, yellow, some red peeking in there. Looking down at the bottom chart, we can see those um, those areas highlighted with red, where the speeders or the the higher proportion of speeders are. Or when when that's happening, and we're kind of focused around that morning morning peak. People are probably trying to get to work again, kind of that midday, evening, and then and then you know, um, so it's kind of late night, which isn't, you know, maybe, maybe it's a little jarring because of the yellow and red. But again, we have very very low traffic at that time, so it's not um, you're not standing there on the corner watching cars just fly by you. Um, but they're again highlighting some of those times of day when people are driving a little a little quicker in the area. And let me. And so one thing I didn't mention as well for for all these for all these sites we've discussed so far, um, we also looked at kind of the, the traffic directionality, of which way vehicles were moving. Um, back it up a little bit here. So here on Pennsylvania, we were lo looking at roughly a, like a 50-50 split of north and southbound traffic, um, pretty pretty equivalent going both directions. 
Uh, very similar here at Delwood. We've, uh, we've got a 48-52 split. Um, and then here on Claremont, we also have a about a 49-51 split uh, of traffic. So again, fair, fairly equal, fairly equivalent uh, going each direction. Um, and, and so, and then that brings us to uh, this 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 site here on um, in the south southeast part of our quadrant on Claremont. Um, we can see uh, for being the same road between the last between, between the site we just spoke about and this one, we have um, significantly increased volumes at this location. Um, and you can see on our charts on the left hand side here, a little bit more red showing up, a little bit more higher speed traffic. Um, one of the interesting things about this location that we um, that we noticed was that um, the split of, of directionality um, leans more heavily towards the westbound traffic, which which may indicate uh, a, a couple of things. One of those things might be uh, some cut through um, that's also right near the Annunciation School and Church, and it may indicate a kind of a, a circular traffic pattern from um, drop off conditions or, or or you know attending church, whatever the reason. There's there's something. Um, Something going on here that's it's, it's, it's putting the pushing the traffic to uh, primary to a uh, more significant westbound and about a 62 38 split. Um, go, get, getting now into the the volumes again, we have a little bit higher volume than we did on the um, western portion of Claremont, um, but we do have um, again those 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 morning and uh, kind of afternoon PM uh, peaks highlighted here a little bit a little bit further. Those might may be driven again, kind of the higher volumes might be driven there by the the Annunciation School and and, and those uh, bell bell schedules at that location, uh, and in our speeding uh, kind of kind of low levels throughout the day. The the higher um, proportion is going to be towards you know eight after eight o'clock, um, eight o'clock nine o'clock midnight. Um, but again, the the they kind of peaky around the the morning uh, and midday again. <coughs> And now our last our last uh, discussion site, we moved up to Delwood again. This this location is a, a similar volume as the location we talked about, about 1100 vehicles. And this is right on uh, just north, uh, uh, you know, the Delwood northeast of the Sandia um, Sandia School. Uh, here again, we see um, on our on our volumes per hour, our our higher traffic volumes are definitely focused around the uh, the bell schedules of the school, but right there at seven and two in the afternoon, um, speeding doesn't doesn't appear. There's not there's not a ton of red, but it's kind of focused on that on that lunch um, that lunch hour uh, when that kind of peaks a little bit. Mostly, we have we have uh, you know a, a low a low percentage of of higher speed traffic all throughout the the day, but there's a kind of that peaky peaky um, speed going on right there at, at the, in the noon hour. <clears throat> And so that that, that kind of wraps up our, our 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 data collection for traffic and our volumes and our speeds. Um, we're going to kind of summarize quickly, or not quickly, but we're just going to summarize some of the stuff we're looking at as the crash data. Um, this, the crash data we have available is kind of the most recent uh, data set from from the state, and that's uh, from 2018 through 2022. Um, what we're looking at, um, what the image you're looking at here is an aerial of our study area again, where we just plotted a, a heat map of the concentration. Of crashes throughout our study area, um, and you can tell um, here some of those more, more of those larger, um, those greater concentrations of crashes were um, really focused on that higher volume road of Pennsylvania right through the center of our of our study area, and then over at uh, Aztec um, and Wyoming, uh, and again some of those crashes at Aztec and Wyoming may be. Not necessarily the result of something that happened right on Attic, but at, because of the way we look at this code, we took crashes that were may have been right at that on Wyoming at Aztec and not necessarily just attributed to just Wyoming itself. So that's why that I think that is showing a, a greater concentration at that location. But for most of the part, through through some of the neighborhoods and on those local streets, um, the, the higher concentrations are kind of going down to that southeastern corner of our of our study area again. Um, and a little bit on Delwood, uh, but nothing, nothing real, real major on those uh, those residential streets. <clears throat> um, here's another uh, look at the same crash data, where we um, broke out each of the crashes by the 
the severity of the crash um, that was that was attributed to to the crash. You know, obviously, clearly uh, a, a fatal crash is pretty definitive on how that crash resulted. Um, fortunately, we only had one of those crashes in our study area that happened at, over up at um, Pennsylvania and Comanche. Um, we also had a few uh, serious injury crashes throughout the corridor, one on Aztec to the east of our study area, one again at Comanche in Pennsylvania, and another on Pennsylvania in Claremont. Um, and again, another positive. I know we're talking injuries and and, and fatalities, but uh, the big the big bulk of these crashes are minor injury and fender bender, property damage only type crashes. So, you know that that that's the the bright side of, of looking at crashes is that most of the crashes, a significant amount of the crashes in this study area are uh, are, are are you know fairly minor and not. Um, where they're not critically injuring someone or or, or people perishing. So, yeah. Um, so we we also looked at some of the kind of temporal trends of our crashes. Starting, we're going to look at a few slides looking at different um, crashes throughout different, you know, by year, by month, by time of day, things like that. See if we see any trends. Uh, one of the trends I'm seeing with crashes by year here is that the the crashes uh, in this corridor not only are they decreasing in this within this data set. Um, but the severity and the more serious crashes are are not uh, present in the last three years here, uh, or the last years of our data, 21, our 2021 and 22. So that you know that 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 is a a, a positive uh, observation. <clears throat> um, looking at crashes by month, um, this is this is an interesting graph. Um, so such we we you know uh, clearly there's a a bar that catches your eye and draws you to it right away, which is which is March, um, when you and, and which is has significantly more crashes than any other month in this uh, scenario. Um, so this is something that we've looked at. We've kind of went back to the data, looked a little bit. Nothing's really jumping out at us at the moment. And we, you know, towards the end of this, or and when we kind of have more of a discussion, we want to talk to hopefully uh, some of the residents here that may be able to shed some insight on on the prominence of of, of crash frequency in this month because. We we in the data the data is not really pointing to anything um, at the moment, so definitely a topic for discussion once we once we wrap this up. <clears throat> um, another another chart we're looking at here uh, we're looking at crash severity by day, um, kind of you know picks up from increases from the weekend up to Wednesday, decreases as we head towards the weekend. Something about hump day. Um, this isn't not really. Uh, out of out of the ordinary, I believe. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 nothing crazy. And even the difference between the crashes, it's it, it's not a lot. But again, we're, we 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 are not seeing a lot in the data. Kind of point us in, in any direction. Uh, again, another topic for for so some of the residents here, if they have some insight onto maybe maybe why that's if there is something that's happening on Wednesdays that's such a prominent day for for crashes in this area. <clears throat> And finally, and our last, sorry to again bombard you with so many bars and charts and colors, but here's our last bar chart we're going to look at for time wise. Um, crashes by hour, looking at again, sometimes looking at data like this can can indicate, oh man, look, here we are. It's this, this already something, something's really going on, what's happening. And, and here we're not seeing, uh, again, nothing's jumping out. Um, what, what I think that we can really see and what's really interesting here um, is that the majority of our crashes. Are happening between seven and eight p.m., um, which is as we kind of saw with the earlier with the traffic volumes. That's kind of again the the time of days when or the times of day when people are are out on the road. So, you know, higher volumes, more people driving, the higher likelihood that uh, a, a crash may may occur. So, taking that away, but take but taking that and moving to this to this next slide where we're looking at crashes by hour. Um, as we just we just saw that a majority of the traffic. Is traveling between seven and eight p.m. Um, arguably, some of the uh, times of day when we have sun out. You know, obviously we have we have winter where you know our, our daylight's a little bit, our daytime's a little bit shorter. But looking at the the the, the bar chart on the far right of this image, um, we broke down the percentage of traffic uh, driving during the daytime or or, or light light under light conditions. Um, contrasted that with uh, the traffic was moving during dark or or dawn dusk hours, which 
would, would, would you know suggest some some lighting um, challenges or whatever. But we have about 65 to 70 percent of the vehicles traveling during the daytime, during the daylight, uh, and the other 35, 30 percent uh, traveling um, at night or or in kind of those the twilight hours of the day. Um, and the reason we're pointing that out is that we, if you look at the bar just immediately to the left of it, we're looking at crashes uh, that, that occurred during lighting, during the light by light condition. So you can see here about, I would say 85% of our crashes, um, 80 to 85% were happening during light conditions um, and, and a very low percentage, 10 to 15% during dark or dawn conditions. And, and kind of what we were seeing again with this last chart that we saw of the crashes per hour, um, we would expect to see more of a um, kind of proportional across the right. The more traffic we have, uh, we're likely to see more traffic, more more crashes occurring at that time. Um, and we we showed this to kind of show that based off looking at this crash data, the 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 lack of lighting or or lighting conditions don't appear to be a a contributing factor or or responsible for for crashes in our in our study area. <clears throat> Um, again, looking looking more more kind of spatial relation to our crashes um, because this is traffic calming study and, and safety. We we can't ignore that that speed um, poses a safety challenge to other vehicles, but especially um, uh, pedestrians and bicycles. But here are um, the crashes in our study area where uh, speed was attributed as being a, a contributing factor to each crash. Um, and the focus here we can see. We have quite a few on Aztec, um, and as we talked about, maybe um, how we decided where we wanted to collect our data, we we saw this early on and thought that might be some a good a good place to look and collect some data on what's happening in that area. We didn't see anything in our data, but it guided our it guided our our decision. Um, again, looking down towards the south of our of our study area, we have a couple other crashes there. One on Claremont um, near Vermont. And that uh, again, it's kind of been an area that's been popping up through our conversation today. Um, it's almost begging for for some more attention. Um, again, we have, and then we have another at Pennsylvania and and Phoenix um, on that um, collector in high volume street. <laughs> uh, and and lastly, we're going to look at um, some kind of multimodal crashes. Uh, our crashes involving again, vulnerable, what you would call vulnerable vulnerable road users. Um, first, we're looking at pedestrian crashes. Um, we only had four in the last uh, in this data set. Uh, we had we did have one serious injury over on the east side of our study area on Aztec. Um, sorry, so each one of these locations is 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 marking the location, and I, I put a little halo around it to signify what that severity uh, of that crash was. So we had a, a serious injury over on the eastern side of our study area near Moon on Aztec. Uh, we had two. Um, Complaint of injuries on Pennsylvania, and then we had a a, a visible injury on uh, in the southwest quadrant of our study area on on Claremont, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> Lastly, um, we're looking at um, bicycle collisions and crashes. Um, we have one on the south southwest side over over. I don't recall what that street is there, um, but very southwest near Phoenix. Um, again. And then, uh, sorry, again, these are very low acuity fender bender crashes, property damage only, no one was injured, which is very, very, very good. Um, and then we had another one uh, was at Virginia, I believe, and uh, and Claremont. So that that cluster in the southeast, again, just kind of keeps keeps coming up. Um, so, yeah, uh, moving on to. So when we first kind of started this study, uh, we had heard some concerns about um, on street parking uh, through the area. So on one of our on, on one of our site visits, we we drove through the area and got some um, and, and just kind of tried to see what was going on. Um, and you can see here we're we're look, we're on veranda looking east. Um, we can see uh, a fairly wide roadway with uh, um, you know parallel parking right right on the street. Um, this is more of like here's what we saw. No, there's nothing um, egregious or illegal about what we're seeing here. It's just here's. Here's what we're seeing, and, and we want to make sure that um, here's what we saw. Um, what what did we miss, or what are we what are we not seeing that that, that is causing uh, concern for for some of you, some of the residents? So there's one 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 location 
Um, here's another right in front of uh, Sandia High School. This is uh, around um, the, the the afternoon um, bell, I believe. Um, again, a little bit more narrow road than than veranda, um, and we're seeing some cars some cars here on the side of the road, parallel parking. Again, still enough room for for a vehicle traveling eastbound to to maneuver that safely. Um, but but then again, there there are some there there is some of the the parking on street parking that we that we did run into. Uh, and lastly, thank you. I, I I don't remember your name. I'm glad. I'm happy that you sent us this photo. Um, this is again another photo on uh, on uh, showing the on street parking on um, on Claremont near Utah. Um, both sides of the street are fairly uh, fairly busy and, and 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 fairly used for parking in this area. Again, nothing nothing in from the photo looks uh, egregious or 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 out of, out of place. This is completely legal to do. Um, but we're, this is what we're seeing again. Um, so if we, if we, if we missed something or, or weren't, weren't out there at the, at the correct time, um, we'd like to discuss that here coming up shortly. Um, and but with that, that kind of concludes our, our presentation. Um, and so we want to, um, to just to, to to chat with 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 some of some of the residents, some of the attendees here, um, about you know what are we seeing? Are are those crashes located um, where where you remember them? Sometimes the crash data can there there can be errors um, or or did we miss something in our in our in in the net we cast to look for challenges? Um, so at this time I'm going to um, you, why don't you go ahead and raise your hand? I think Michael, um, Mike Caius has, has, Mr. Caius has, has done that, and we will we will proceed that way. Um, but thank you for for your time, um, and I and I'll pass it back to uh, to Council Feeblecorn and Paul. If you guys have anything to say, if not, we'll we can jump into um, taking some questions. I think we should just jump into questions. I hope that folks have some comments to share. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. Good. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. There's a there's a lot of information there, and I uh, appreciate that uh, that detailed uh, given us on the conditions as we saw them. Um, so let's just jump in with Mike. Um, can you uh, unmute? Oh, I need to do that. Sorry, hang on. Yes, please. Mic. All right. It looks like we've got a couple of hand raised here. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce names uh, just because I don't want to land myself in trouble, but I'm going to go ahead and activate Mike's first, sized his name up first. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't get your mic on. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, a couple of things. Uh, the, what was the date range of the two bicycle crashes? I, I think I missed that. Was that a four year date range from 2018 to 2022? It's five years, yes. Five years. So that's not very many. I mean, all bicycle crashes are unfortunate, but that that's that's not too many. Um, what what are the three main methods of traffic calming available? Great, great question. Um, so not really the focus of this, but I'm more than happy to get into um, some of the options. Um, what what we like to do when we refer to traffic calming is look at things that we can do, um, maybe separating ourselves from regulatory and looking at things in the environment that we can use for clues to the driver to drive at the desired speed limit that we're looking for. Um, you can imagine that if it's a you know four lane wide road and there's nothing in your way, it seems like there's just a whole lot of space and you the dry as a driver, you get a tendency to drive faster, um, you know, kind of managing your own risk. Whereas if you find things that are narrower, uh, closer to the roadway, um, other objects, uh, many times that can uh, you know enforce or enhance the driver's, um, choices to, to drive at an appropriate speed. So with that in mind, there are um, there's some classics and then there's some, you know, maybe new opportunities. Um, one of the classics is going to be um, the um, like a speed hump is probably the most common around here. And traditionally, the 
uh, or in the past, many times they used to use speed uh, bumps, not to be confused. A, a speed bump is more like what you'd see in a parking lot, um, uh, but a speed hump is the longer, um, many times shorter um, feature. It's uh, safer for emergency vehicles, uh, but still not preferred on emergency routes, uh, but it does have a decent amount of effectiveness. Other things that can be done are additional signing if there's um, specific locations or objects. Um, striping can be also used to reinforce. Um, and, you know, as part of that, you know, activity can be done. The more cyclists you have using a road can also have a traffic calming effect. Um, you can see like a great examples on the west side of Claremont uh, where on street parking is used and the striping is pulled in and that narrows the, the perceived area for the vehicle um, in that case. And uh, that's one of those those tools in the toolbox. OK, there, there's, there's several more. Comment. Sure. One comment about uh, narrowing the roadway. Uh, some places it works well and some others, uh, they've already narrowed it on Pennsylvania, part of it anyway. But I know that when they did the traffic calming on Comanche, west of San Mateo all the way to, to Carlisle. I thought that was the greatest thing I've, I've seen in a long time. In fact, if I'm going to Costco, I will avoid Montgomery altogether because I have no problem getting through on uh, Comanche there. Um, so uh, all in all, I wonder who initiated the, the, the study for Sandia High School. Of course, it left off a lot of Sandia High School area neighborhood because there's some of it, a lot of us are north of Comanche. Um, but it doesn't seem, you know, it says the annual growth rate in the area is a negative 2.33%. So I just wonder why why it, it's all that necessary with, with in five years, only one fatality, although that's tragic, and only three serious inju injuries. So what, what's the what's the hurry on this? Um, so before Kind of answer that. I'm going to let other people talk and we may get to yeah. that uh, uh, conclusion as well. Um, just the, the quick things that we looked at kind of lead us to what were the concerns that were voiced at the time. Um, the uh, speed, um, the safety and the the parking or the uh, guidance that could be provided for parking. So those were the, the kind of the three initiatives that were received. Um, and then what I found in, in many of these studies that I've done is that the, the impetus of the study kind of evolves as we get more and more feedback. And the, what we thought was we were looking at the beginning many times is, is not actually the, the most prominent feature uh, in, in conclusion and what the, the most of the mitigations. So that's kind of where we are in this study. So it's a great question that we'll, we'll open up back up to the group is uh, you know what are the biggest concerns uh, in the area and then where should we focus our attention um, at that time? Thank you very much, Mike. Thank I appreciate you. your Thank comments you. and participation. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the uh, microphone for Wendy and let her share her thoughts and questions with us as well. One moment here. I think Wendy, you can go ahead and, and you have control. You just need to unmute yourself on your on your device. Sorry, I'm Wendy Shanahan. I live on Utah, everyone's favorite street. I know it's a uh, Tammy Thiebelkorn's favorite topic. Um, I'm the person who sent that picture of the legal parking on Claremont. What's of interest to me is that unless you maybe live here or are here on Sunday, nothing against enunciation, I've lived in this neighborhood for 65 years in the ha same house for almost all that time. Um, but in front of the church right, right across uh, Utah, they have a, no parking signs for Sunday in front of another church. So I'm not clear why it isn't the same for both churches. That's a concern to me. Um, it is very difficult to get through there. It's certainly when you have two cars, you're lucky to get through. And possibly it's been that way because the size of cars has increased over the years as well. We're not all driving little bitty skinny cars anymore. So that's the first thing. But you know, you did, I know you did a speed study coming up Claremont. I wish you'd do a speed study coming down Utah 
because the fact of the matter is, and I did write this in an email to whoever I sent that to um, with the photos, you can drive all the way from Candelaria to Phoenix down Utah with never having to stop because we are the only block, the only state street in this area that doesn't have a stop sign as you come down or up, as it were, Claremont, Utah. And we, we get the buses, we get all the food truck from the businesses. We, we get, what else do we get? We get every single parent dropping off a child, um, you know, which they've been asked by the school not to do. And they, they come roaring down here. And then I hate to bring up the other topic, which may not fit here. They've practically taken away our speed hump. It's more like a speed suggestion, um, maybe. They haven't finished the streets. They haven't re relined them. Um, I spoke to the woman, a woman at Annunciation School. Uh, they haven't relined down by the playground. So it's like they just started and stopped. And the traffic down Utah is unimaginable how fast they drive down the streets. Just test drive their cars. Yeah, yeah, they test drive the cars from the car places on and all. So I, I don't know. I mean, I know that's a combination, and you probably don't want to deal with it all, but that is what happens in this area. Uh, it's The street is worse looking because it's got so much traffic on it all the time. I don't know where the school bus is going. There's nowhere for them to go. <laughs> So there you go. That's it. Yeah, I appreciate that, Wendy. That, that's definitely the, the feedback we're looking for. Uh, people going, did you have I'm sorry. OK, um, there's definitely. Um, can you just describe the um, the speed hump condition again? Is it just worn out over time or did they? No, no, pave? no. They paved. They okay. came through last summer, sort of, and they did a coat. And look, this was a company from out of town. It was a long weekend. Uh, we were the last street. They laid it down pretty quickly of an evening and headed out. Um, you know, the, I wrote this again in my letter. The aggregate is, you can see it. it it's torn up. But th that's true for all the streets. All of them have that crap from the edge of the asphalt that was put down flying up everywhere. So the speed bump just got less humpy. <laughs> Yeah, and and then they again haven't come out to do any lining, so lining on it. So we've got those little flappers. Uh, I have a number of pictures of all the streets around here with all the little flappers are just in the gutter, you know, because they break off. So yeah, the speed the speed bump. We'd like to have a bump, but I know we're only getting up. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. <laughs> it used to be a bigger. A bigger hump and because of the amount of traffic and the fact that they don't have to stop they get quite a bit of ski speed going between phoenix even with the school there and the church there between phoenix and candelaria oh my gosh yeah definitely definitely a and focus of concern you know we have kids again in this area that's a good thing it was an aging a more aging group but there are a lot more kids in this neighborhood now and I, I don't know. I, I've got a neighbor across the street who doesn't let her kids play in the front because, you know, it's it's pretty speedy. So there you go. Yeah, you know, I appreciate that. There's definitely definitely a lot to 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 put in to the study and uh, make sure that we've we've captured, um, you know, the conditions as we see them. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Michael, do you have a, another question? We sure do. Paul um, is next up to have had his hand raised. And Paul, you can go ahead and unmute yourself when you're ready and uh, ask away or offer your comments. All right. Th thanks, Mike. Um, th going back uh, to, to the study you guys were doing, um, the accident ratio on March, just a little bit of insight, but that's uh, during daylight savings time that month when it begins. And so that's probably why you have that high count of accidents. Um, so th that's one thing. And then uh, I live on Utah, north of uh, Sandia. So it connects uh, Delwood to Comanche. And so I, I noticed 
since I moved here uh, three years ago, after COVID, once school started uh, normal hours again, uh, that there's a significant amount of like high speeders that go down Utah, and they're ex it's mostly just students probably just leaving the school, and Utah is probably the uh, most straight street going from Delwood to Comanche. It has the stop sign there on Delwood, and so I've noticed that you know first thing in the morning, and then also when school lets out around between two and three. So uh, I don't know if you want to include that in your study, or or if, you know, I'm just bringing that that portion up. Um, I, I have a younger kid that goes to Comanche and uh, elementary, so the the times you know it's it's not. It, there's really not that much concern. It's just during those uh, times, we, uh, it's, you know, first thing in the morning and then also after school. So uh, I know there's probably other hotter spots around that people are more concerned about, but th I just wanted to bring that one up. Yeah, definitely appreciate that, Paul. Um, it's interesting that Utah's, uh, you know, challenge on both sides of the school. Um, yeah, like exactly. You're right. Looking at it, it, it is the most uh, direct route between those and, and may have some just uh, intuitive preference um, by the, the drivers finding their way. Um, but yeah, that uh, we will regroup as a team and make sure that we've captured it. Uh, so I appreciate the input. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, next, uh, with a raised hand, we don't actually have a name. I hopefully our initials uh, CS. Uh, you're clear to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. I just have a quick comment about the length of your study and looking at the decrease in accidents over your five-year period. A big chunk of that was during the COVID shutdown and nobody was driving. So it's not really representative of how things are now. Um, just a comment that, you know, it really wasn't getting better. It was just nobody was driving. That is that is definitely a, a, a great observation, uh, something we did consider. I wish uh, I guess. I would have anticipated 2022 uh, bouncing back as the volumes have bounced back. If we look at our pre COVID volumes and our volumes that we currently have now um, and we kind of isolate those years, maybe like 2018 to 2022. Um, they're relatively the same in the volumes, but we still, at least in that one sample that's out of COVID, um, we haven't seen that uptick in crashes in this area. In many other areas, things have changed, and we do look at that. Um, so I, I do appreciate the the comment that uh, it's not all attributed to, you know, we haven't solved the problem or uh, you know, uh, fixed the, the any of the challenges. So. Definitely uh, something we are keeping an eye on. Um, not definitely not rooting for for the crashes to go back up, but uh, the observation uh, that you uh, identified in COVID is is definitely there, and we saw that in the traffic volumes as well. All right, thank you. You bet. All right. Well, at the moment, I don't see anyone else with their hand. Oh. Looks like we have uh, Wendy. Go ahead. You've raised your hand again. Uh, feel free to Sorry. unmute yourself. Sorry, I had just one one question. I I sent my little list of concerns to Mr. Montano, and at the end, uh, at the beginning and the end, I did indicate that this might not be the best meeting for them, and asked if he would pass those on to uh, perhaps it's Tammy or somebody, so they don't just get filed away. And so I just wanted to be sure that my questions and my suggestions from our community, because there's several people here in my living room, you know, doing this together, that they got to somebody in case it wasn't part of this study. So thank I you. I can go ahead and field that, Wendy. We certainly did. We all of us here in the office have read that email, and um, <laughs> we, we, we're, we will definitely make sure that it doesn't find its way into the circular file. Uh, we'll pass that famous. along either to the traffic engineering division or to uh, whoever is the relevant uh, thank you. individual or, thank or entity you. to take a my, look at your my at famous your... photos of the street corners. <laughs> okay, thanks. Well, I'd really like to thank you for those. They were very helpful. Um, as far as is trying to figure out what's going on in the area, that's exactly the kind of input that we're looking for here in this meeting and um, in general from the community. 
Thank you. Thanks for having the meeting. You're most welcome. Um, at the moment, I don't have anybody else um, raising their hand. We've still got quite a few people in the meeting. Are there any other comments from uh, community members that we can hear and help focus us and our, our aim to, to address any issues in that, in that area? Well, I'd like to to point out that I've I've, I've uh, in the since 1989 I've lived in either the Mossman neighborhood or the Sandy High School neighborhood, and I re remember very well uh, right across from Sandy High School near Dalewood, there's a a little uh, vacant area there. I think it's a, a utility right of way or something, and for years and years and years I remember the cops would park in there and catch people coming off the stoplight at Comanche in Pennsylvania. I haven't seen the cops there in years now. Uh, most of the most of the speeders are between seven and eight, according to the chart. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have a few speed traps set up occasionally to let every people let people know that they're back. Yeah, definitely. I think we all can uh, recognize that. Uh... Uh, the policing and the the, uh, the staffing that surrounds that has been a challenge. Um, at least that's our conversations when we do have those with our, our enforcement partners. Um, but like you said, there are new initiatives coming on and we will definitely um, articulate what we found in this study um, and and share that with with those those folks as well. Well, with respect to everybody's time, um, raise your hand if you got anything quick, but I'd like to go ahead and conclude the meeting. Um, please reach out to Stephen Montano. His name was on the uh, the invite, the email, and continues to be on the, the website as well for this project in District 7. Um, so continue within the next couple of weeks, possibly if you have a, any other feedback or uh, you know, need to snap a picture and send it in, we'd be happy to to take a look at those. Um, but I again, I thank everybody for the time. Um, I think uh, uh, Councillor Fiebelkorn for her leadership. Mm. Um, if she's got anything to, to conclude with. Yeah, um, it looks like my camera stopped working. I apologize for that. But um, I did want to just respond to Mike's question. Um, so we just had a lot of folks from this general area reaching out to our office with various concerns on speeding, parking, other types of issues. And so our policy at District 7 is that you know, if we get a lot of folks asking for a study in one area, we try to move those along as quickly as we can given our funding source. So I really hope that the answer to this at the end of this is that everything's good. Um, but we did want to respond to the numerous requests for um, various traffic calming in this area. I was pleasantly surprised to see some of the results tonight that there have been fewer um, crashes and, and fewer speeding than than I was expecting. So that's always good. But let's let the you know traffic engineers finalize this, go through all the data and come back to us with what suggestions uh, they think make sense. Do you, oh, let me raise my hand. You go ahead. You're, it's all right, Wendy. You, you, you shoot. <laughs> Is it possible that you might be holding a or gathering together some sort of community? I hate to use the word committee or small group that is in a format um, where people from this, instead of doing it on this online thing, we actually are together or people might want to come to Utah. Clearly, Utah is an issue. <laughs> you know, is, I mean, is it possible that people want to like come out here and walk up the block and kind of see what we're talking about versus the traffic study? I, I get that traffic studies are necessary and important, but equally important are the ideas of being, you know, in the neighborhood. Um, and I don't know if that's something that's realistic. I could be 
old fashioned. No, absolutely. Um, so I will take that suggestion uh, back to uh, the project team and the management group, um, Tammy and, and her her folks and uh, DMD. Um, kind of along that line, um, we were early in the project and maybe the word didn't get out, but we did have a walkthrough. Uh, it happened to occur on the north side of Delwood or north side of the school on Delwood. And we walked up and down that location. We walked the south side of Utah and the stop control there. Um, so maybe we were a little premature in getting the location identified. So it could be an opportunity, um, like you suggested, to, to make that happen. Um, so let's, I'm going to put that back to the, the project management team and we can we can take a look at that. Thank you. You bet. All right, so we'll give one last call. And with that, uh, you know, based on the schedule as provided, we give everybody back an hour of their precious time. And uh, thank you again for everybody in attendance and uh, look forward to uh, providing some additional information. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very right. much. Thanks, everybody.